Hello bookworms! Today I'm here with my BEA book haul and recap. I have so many books to show you, I don't even know how I squeezed them all into my suitcase because I was serious about getting the books that I wanted to get. Like, I did not let anything stop me. So I'm pretty proud of everything that I was able to pick up and I, despite like how many books I have here, I actually was picky about things and I didn't take things that I knew that I wasn't going to read. I'm proud of that because sometimes you get caught up in like the book hype and you're like, okay, I'll have this book and this book and this book. But I was like, no, I'm gonna have this book because I'm gonna read it and this book because I'm gonna read it and that one can stay where it is. So so I got to BEA really, really early on Wednesday morning. Um, I had to get up at like three in the morning um, in order to make my flight to Chicago. And then I like just made it to the hotel and just made it to the convention center in time to do my panel. I was on the panel with Lizzie from Bloomsbury, Molly from Macmillan, uh, Stephanie from Cuddlebuggery, and Stephanie from No BS Book Reviews. Stephanie was our from No BS Book Reviews was our moderator and it was really fun. We just talked about the relationship between bloggers and publishers and um, like timing that goes along with ARCs and how they determine who gets sent what and when they want your feedback and negative reviews and how they see those and um, just lots of like useful information. I thought that it was um, really, really good and the panel room was full, which I was really pleased about because at first we were nervous like oh my gosh I hope people come to this but and they did so that was good but anyway I'm going to get started and show you some of the books that I got so the first couple of books that I'm going to show you are the books that I had in my video of the top 10 books that I wanted to get at BEA and pat on the back I got all 10 so <laughs> that was really exciting but I'm not gonna go into um much of a synopsis about them because I can just link you to that video and you can see the synopses there, but I will give you little tidbits of information about things that happened while acquiring these books. So here we go. First I got Replica by Lauren Oliver and this actually has two covers. So there's this and then if you flip it over, it has that side. And the reason that that is is because the story is told from two different perspectives and you can actually read from, you can choose like which character's perspective you want to read from or if you want to read both. Um, and it came in this neat Velcro, like, container, so that actually isn't even, like, it looks like it's yellow and blue, but it's not. It's white and white. And I don't know if that's how it's going to be when they come out with the final book, but I thought that was pretty cool for an arc. I love when things come, like, in boxes. I don't know why. It just, like, makes me love things even more. I'm easily swayed by marketing. The next one that I got is The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. This one I'm really excited about because I got Nicola Yoon's debut book at BEA last year and I feel like hopefully this will be like a tradition going forward where I'll just get a new Nicola Yoon book every year at BEA. Um, I'm really really looking forward to it and she has been blessed with a wonderful covers so far so that's cool. Then I also got The Reader by Tracy Chi which is actually a little bit thicker than I was expecting but it's a new fantasy novel and um, it sounds like it's gonna be good. It has pretty good reviews on Goodreads so far and this is another one that you can also check out in my BEA video that I made before this one. Also in that video is Three Dark Crowns by Kendare Blake which is one of the books that I was most anticipating like top three books from BEA. Um, I really loved Kendar Blake's Anna Dressed in Blood duology and I am just fascinated by the premise for Three Dark Crowns. I think it is so cool that it is based on the way that bees actually handle themselves and it follows three queens who grew up apart from each other but they have to kind of fight to the death to figure out which of the three is going to be the queen whoever like kills her other sisters first. So it just sounds like a really interesting book and I this is probably going to be the second BEA book that I pick up after one that I will show you in a moment. The first book that I am absolutely going to read from BEA comes in a box which obviously I love but it's so pretty it says open me and it has this little black heart here um, and then if I do open it it's Heartless by Marissa Meyer. You don't even know what I went through to get this book like 
I got pushed into a table because that's how insane it was. There was just a stampede at the Macmillan booth. Um, it was really unfortunate, really overwhelming. That's really not the way that people should handle themselves. I was trying to like shrink away because I was just like, oh, I don't want to be caught in this madness, but also I really wanted this book. Um, luckily, I ended up getting in the line um, and I ended up getting a ticket and I was able to get Heartless and have Marissa Meyer sign it, which is super awesome. And I really love the cover like even more in person than I did from just uh, photos that I've seen of it online. This is a new book by Marissa Meyer and it is all about the um, Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland prior to when she became evil. So I think it's gonna be really good. I'm really excited and as soon as I finish reading Clockwork Princess this is gonna be the next book that I read. Then I have A Torch Against the Night by Saba Tahir. This is actually the book that I waited online the longest for clocking in at over two hours, but it was really fun um, waiting in the line. It wasn't so bad because there were a bunch of booktubers that were all sitting together and we were playing this game called WhatsApp, um, which was really fun. I am like not good at guessing things, but I liked watching and like seeing other people try to guess the clues and stuff. So I had a good time with that. Um, so that definitely made those hours go by a little bit quicker. Then I also got Caraval by Stephanie Garber. Um, this book has like suddenly become very hyped. I remember writing about it for a top 10 Tuesday post on my blog like in January or something like before the cover was even revealed because I was just like that sounds really cool and now all of a sudden there's like all this hype surrounding it which is awesome. So I was really looking forward to this one and I feel really fortunate that I was able to get it. And then I got The Thousandth Floor by Catherine McGee. The arcs were printed without without a cover but there actually is a cover that's been released and you can see it on Goodreads but um, this book just sounds so cool because it's basically Gossip Girl set in the future with all these like privileged teens. They're living on the thousandth floor of a new skyscraper in New York City and the book begins with one of them falling to their death. So it sounds really exciting and like there's gonna be a lot going on. Then I got Stealing Snow by Danielle Page, which I was wrong about in my top 10 books of BEA video, so I will correct myself here. Thank you to everybody who noticed that. I truly thought that this was a Snow White retelling, but it's actually a Snow Queen retelling, which is even better because I feel like there's been so many Snow White retellings that we need a Snow Queen retelling and this will fill the void. So I'm like even more excited for it than I was when I thought that it was about Snow White. And then lastly, this is the first book that I picked up when I was at BEA, which is Rebel Genius by Michael Dante DiMarcello. Um, it's by the co-creator of Avatar The Last Airbender and Korra. Um, and yeah, so like I needed this and I'm so happy that I was able to get it right away. Tiffany from About to Read came with me um, straight after we did our panels. We just grabbed some lunch and then we went straight to this line and we were toward the front of it and I'm so happy and I got it signed to both me and Andrew because we watched those shows together and love them and yeah, I'm so excited. Then I have books that were not in my top 10 books of BEA video and I will get started on those right now. The first book that I got is The Scourge by Jennifer A. Nielsen. This is by the author of the False Prince trilogy or the I don't know if that's the name of the trilogy but that's the that's the name of the first book in the trilogy. I'm not sure if the rest of them are called that too. It sounds really cool. It's about like it's a fantasy book and there is a plague and they have to try to um obviously like make sure that this plague doesn't spread and kill everyone and it sounds really cool and I really love the cover which you can't really see too well I don't think on camera I'm like trying to see but if you look it up online you'll see like a much better cover of it. Then I have The 12 Days of Dash and Lily by David Levithan and Rachel Cohn, which I'm really excited about because I really enjoyed the first book and um, David Levithan was actually signing it and I told him how much it means to me because the majority of that book takes place in The Strand in New York City, which as everyone who's been watching my channel for a while knows is one of my favorite places in the world and it's the place where Andrew proposed to me. So it means a lot to me and I actually told David that when he was signing and he was like, 
oh my god, that's amazing. Um, and he was like, I have a boyfriend and I hope that he proposes to me in the strand because then I'll know that it's right. And I was like, totally. But anyway, yeah, so that was really exciting and I'm really excited to read this one. And I love Christmas books, so I'm going to probably read this one like the day after my birthday because right now we're in Kristen's birthday season. <laughs> Then later that same day, I met David Levithan yet again because he was signing You Know Me Well, which he co-wrote with, with Nina LaCour. I was really excited because this one's actually a finished copy and there, every once in a while you'll find finished copies at the EA, but for the most part you're going to be getting ARCs. So this was a fun surprise and David actually remembered me and I was wearing a dress that was like covered in books. So as soon as I went up to him to have it signed, he said, I'm so sorry. I was so overwhelmed by your wonderful engagement story that I didn't get to tell you how much I really like your dress. And I was like, oh my God, you remembered me. That's awesome. So that was really fun. And I'm really looking forward to reading this one as well. The next book that I have is Vasa in the Night by Sarah Porter. This is inspired by a Russian folktale called Vasilisa the Beautiful, um, and it has Baba Yaga in it, which is really awesome. So I'm really looking forward to that. It sounds like it's going to be really cool. And I hadn't realized before, but Sarah Porter actually wrote a trilogy about mermaids. I think the book is called, the first book is called Lost Voices. Um, and one of my coworkers had enjoyed that. So then that got me even more excited to read her new book. Then I got Blood for Blood by Ryan Groudon, and I actually have not yet read the first book, Wolf for Wolf. Um, it's an alternate history book that takes place during World War II, and I really only picked this one up because Cassie from Spines with Wines Book Club wanted to read it because she loved the first one, so when I had the opportunity to grab it, I made sure to get it for her because I know that she's just like dying to read this one. Then I got a chapter sampler of Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, which is her new book. I'm really excited about this, even though I normally wouldn't wait in line for a chapter sampler, um, but Lainey Taylor was signing and I really wanted to meet her because I really do love her other books and it was just like really cool to have the opportunity to meet her. Um, and also this is actually like a pretty big chapter sampler comparative to any of the other ones that I got. So I felt pleased like in order to do that. And then I also got, um, a little like pouch that's full of pins with quotes from the book and they're all really really cute and one of them is now like a favorite quote of mine so I probably should have had that near me when I was filming but I forgot oops um I'll show them off like at some other point but yeah so I'm excited that I got this and I got a photo with Lainey um which I haven't yet posted online but I should do that soon then I also got a chapter sampler of Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo again I would not have really waited for a chapter sampler, but they still have the tickets for it and I had time and I wanted to meet Lee Bardugo, so this was cool. And also, one of the main reasons that Monica and I went to wait in this line is because they were giving out really cool Six of Crows tattoos and Monica was like, I have to have those, those are adorable. I'm really on the line for these tattoos. So, we get there and we get the chapter sampler and we get this little thing of tattoos, which is really exciting, right? Not, not right. They must have ran out of tattoos, but they still gave us like this one part of it. So that was a little bit disappointing, but what are you going to do? And then the last chapter sampler that I got is Carve the Mark by Veronica Roth. I'm honestly probably not even going to read this. Harper just had this um, sitting out on their booth. So it wasn't something that, that I had to wait in line for. Um, I do like the cover, but I looked inside of it and the reason I'm not going to read it is because the sampler is from chapter 7 so it's not even something that I can like start and then get excited for. Like I don't really want to read chapter 7 in the middle of this book that's coming out in 2017 and then like not remember anything about it, you know? It just seems like illogical to me so yeah. Then I picked up Iron Man The Gauntlet by Ian Colfer and um, this one sounds really cool. I mostly picked it up because Ian Colfer is the author of the Artemis Fowl books and I thought that that sounded really interesting and like that would be a good person to be writing Iron Man. Then I was really excited right after the Heartless line to jump into the Wonder Woman line by Sam Maggs. This is a new book from Quirk Books. You might remember Sam from the last book that she published with them, which was called The Fangirl's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, this book is, follows 25 innovators, inventors, and trailblazers who changed history. So it's all just like information about really, really important women in history, which sounds phenomenal to me, and I cannot wait to read this one. 
Then I got Lock and Key, The Initiation by Ridley Pearson. Um, I don't know a ton about this book, but I picked it up because Ridley Pearson is one of the authors who created the Peter and the Starcatcher series, which I really, really adored. And this is a new middle grade series that he's working on, and it is going to be, it, oh, sorry, and it is inspired by Sherlock Holmes. So that sounded promising, and that is why I grabbed a copy. The next book that I picked up is Warp by Lev Grossman. This book um, is actually Lev Grossman's debut novel, but it's being republished, and um, supposedly this is where you can kind of get the idea of where Quentin Coldwater came from his Magician series. So I am looking forward to reading this one and seeing kind of what inspired the character, even though Quentin is the most annoying protagonist ever. Um, but yeah, I'm assuming that he went back and edited some of this and the Magician's trilogy seems to keep getting better as it goes along. So I'm interested in seeing this and it's quite short. So it's definitely something that I will be able to read pretty quickly. The next book that I have is Seven Days of You by Cecilia Vaness. Um, this book sounds really cute because it's a contemporary romance, but it takes place in Tokyo and it follows a protagonist who is, um, who is up to her last seven days in Tokyo before she's going to be moving back to the United States. Um, and then obviously there is some kind of love story that happens and what better place than Japan. Then I picked up The Amateurs by Sarah Shepard, which is a new series that she's writing. Sarah Shepard has also written the Pretty Little Liars series and The Lion Game and The Perfectionists and some other stuff. Um, but I thought that this might be just like a fun quick read. I know like the Pretty Little Liars books are not like good books, but they're entertaining. And sometimes I'm in the mood for something that is like quick and lighthearted and just quick. So <laughs> I'll probably get to pick this up when I feel or I'll probably pick this up when that mood strikes. Then I got a signed finished copy of The Raven King, which is quite possibly one of my favorite conclusions to a series of all time. So I'm like over the moon about this one. Um, I was so, so excited that they still had tickets left for this line when I went to get it. Um, I just, I really love Maggie Stiefvater and I'm just amazed with with this whole series and I just love all of the characters and I love the world and oh, I love everything about it. It was so fun meeting Maggie too and I, I got a photo with her which I posted on my Instagram but um, as soon as I like got up she asked um, have you read the series and I was like yeah I read the series the whole series and I read the last book in the series like in two days of it coming out because I was just so obsessed and like needed to be in it. Um, and so she asked like who my favorite character is, which is obviously my Gansey. Um, and yeah, I'm just like, this book just makes me smile. And I'm so, so pleased that I got to meet her. And it just really means a lot to me. And I'm going to treasure this signed book like forever. Then I got Frostblood by Ellie Blake. I actually don't know too much about this book, but I know that it is a new fantasy that's coming out, so I will be looking more into it a little bit later, but the cover is super cool, and um, I've been hearing good things about it. It has a blurb from Morgan Rhodes, who did the Fallen Kingdom series, so I'm interested in checking it out, and there was a lot of buzz around it, um, so it just kind of like got me excited for it. And then the final book that I picked up is History Is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. Um, this is, this book's not coming out until 2017, I don't, I believe, um, but it is definitely gonna be sad, so I'm gonna have to, like, mentally prepare myself in order to read this one. It's, the synopsis sounds, like, super sad. So it sounds like there is a, there, there's a guy who drowns and someone that's in love with him, like, still is in love with him even after he drowns, and, um, he is just having trouble like moving on in his life um, and he's struggling with OCD and then he is, kind of starts dating um, the guy who drowns boyfriend so he has to like revisit that past and confront all of these feelings that he's having which again sounds really sad. So those are all of the books that I picked up from BEA. It was a very successful trip, if I do say so myself. Um, I don't know if you can tell but I am still sick. I was sick in our Spines with Wines. Um, uh, live show that was posted on Sunday also, but I um, hopefully will be getting better soon because my wedding is coming up really soon. So also I apologize in advance if I don't have as many videos up in the next like two to three weeks, probably more like two weeks, um, because I have just been going crazy with wedding stuff um, and it's all coming together very nicely and I 
definitely do want to post some like footage and stuff from it because if I haven't said it yet, um, Andrew and I are having a space themed wedding. So there are going to be like a ton of Star Wars decorations and Doctor Who decorations. And we've just done a lot of things to make everything kind of different and fun. Um, and I'm really excited about it. So yeah, um, that is all that I have for this video. And I will see you guys soon with a new one. Bye! <laughs> Thank you.